Okay, if you were on social media at all today, and we both know you were, chances are you probably scrolled by an influencer. Now, what started out as a way to grow personal brands from home has now become a multi billion dollar global industry. But now that those influencers are cashing in on the billions, the question is, have they sold away their authenticity and maybe even lost their influence? With me now to discuss Taylor Lorenz, Washington Post technology columnist and author of Extremely Online, the untold story of fame, influence and power on the internet. It is out this week. Can we just talk through this? Because social media influencers killed traditional advertising, right? We no longer were flipping through a magazine, looking at a model claiming that she loved this blender. Now, actually chefs were in their kitchen saying, man, look at all this great stuff. This is what I use. Fast forward, now they get paid so much money, they're just pushing product all day long. Are people gonna eventually catch on to this and tune them out? Not even remotely, unfortunately. The, um, actually, Goldman Sachs just came out with a report saying that the influencer industry is skyrocketing. It's set to reach over, over half a trillion dollar industry by 2027. Okay, but a lot of these influencers are pushing products that they might not even use. Your own paper has a report out that the food industry is paying influencer dietitians, and they are not even saying that they're paid posts. Like, aren't there rules about that? Well, unfortunately, I actually wrote about this in my book. Um, the FTC has really failed in this area to crack down even at all. They don't have a handle on the problem. When they tried to make a crackdown in 2017, they ended up basically making sponsored content aspirational. Um, and so then now you see the rise of fake sponsored content, which is people pretending that they have brand deals uh, with luxury brands or aspirational brands because it's seen as such a status symbol to have a brand deal. And if they do that, then maybe another brand will exactly. want to catch on? Yes, exactly. This is gross. Like, uh, is all of this now just going to be a race for all humans to get sponsored? I think, I mean, well, actually, the big trend recently is launching your own products. I think more and more influencers, they are not interested in doing ad deals because why would you advertise someone else's products when you've developed this audience? You can market to them better than anyone else. So that's why you see Logan Paul's Prime Drink, Emma Chamberlain, Chamberlain Coffee. They're developing their own massive product lines, and these are also becoming huge multi-million dollar businesses. The Nelk Boys Seltzer brand made $70 million in 2021 alone. The Real Housewives. It's Absolutely. what all of them have yep. done. You think yep. my skin looks good? Now I have my own product. Yep. But a lot of these influencers are kids. Mm -hmm. Are there no regulations around them? Absolutely not. I mean, Illinois passed the first state legislation trying to protect child influencers, saying that they're entitled to a portion of their earnings before they turn 18. But it's pretty unenforceable because it's just state legislation. And meanwhile, the U.S. government is not even tracking this type of work. This is a huge new type of work that's really just emerged in the past 15 years. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics is not even tracking it. So we don't even have a handle on. Anything. So none of this is slowing down. This is the tip of the iceberg. Yes, it's just I mean, we're at the beginning of this radical shift in media, and it's been happening for the past 25 years, which is my book reports on. But yeah, it's definitely not slowing down. So at some point, though, how does everyone become an influencer? How does everyone become a brand? There's not that many brands to care about. Yeah, and definitely not everyone is going to have to become an influencer, but we're all connected more and more these days. And we all have a public profile. We're all more living on the Internet, whether or not we put ourselves there, right? Like I can Google anyone and especially kids. Um, and you have this online reputation and you're known for things. And it's increasingly I mean, it, kids are just increasingly able to cash in. I mean, look what's happening with college sports. So for you, I want to know, A, why you wrote this book and, and in your opinion, what the most important takeaway is. Yeah. So I wanted to write this book that really told the rise of social media through the user side. I think we've seen the sort of social network version of social media. There's a lot of focus on these big tech founders, which is great for that side. But we've got the user side and this, again, this half a trillion dollar industry that is completely unregulated with no oversight. It's wild. It's mostly a child labor industry. Um, and no one had really talked about the rise of that industry and um, how it emerged and, and who kind of led that charge. So. What's your biggest fear? Or you have none. You think this is a beautiful, wild, wild west, giddy up and start influencing? Pretty dystopian. Um, I mean, I, I think that I, as I talk about in my book, you know, we are all pressured to sort of commodify ourselves now in our lives and our relationships in increasingly invasive ways. Um, I think it's dark. I mean, there's a lot of liberatory aspects. I have my whole career because I got popular online. I didn't go to journalism school, I got popular on the internet and now I'm in media and able to write a book, you know? So in that way, it can be really amazing for people, but it can also be really dark. I mean, there's huge mental health tolls uh, on content creators because they spend so much time online. My